Will it be easy for the people of the mountain to form their political party to fight against William Samoy Ruto? Welcome back to Havana Media. My name is Bonfessor Wino, and as usual, I'm going to be your host for today. I want to tell you something here for free. We know very well that uh, the people of the mountain, or the leaders of the mountain, the Mount Kenya region leaders, that is uh, being led by Jeremiah Kioni together with Martha Karua, and other leaders have organized a Limuru 3 conference, which is going to take place tomorrow. But I want to tell you this thing for free, that after tomorrow's meeting, Mark these words. After tomorrow's meeting, the politics of Mount, Mount Kenya region will take, will take its shape. The politics of Mount Kenya region will take its shape and let us not be shocked if Mount Kenya region will have another political party. We know very well that in as much as Jubilee Party was banned, but I know very well, what I know is that there is going to rise another, another, another party apart from Jubilee Party. But after tomorrow's meeting, after tomorrow's meeting, the people of the mountain are going to form their own political party. Whether it will be tomorrow, whether it will be another day after tomorrow, but at the end of the day, the people of the mountain will have to form, will, be form, will form their own political party, which will join forces together with the, the, uh, the Zimula Umoja coalition to kick William Ruto out of office. I'm saying this because yesterday Moses Kuria said something concerning the issue of uh, the Limuru 3. He said that uh, the main agenda of Limuru 3 is to, is to organize this issue of one man, one vote, one shilling. Something that we talked about, and I asked yesterday in one of my videos, that Rigadi Gashagwa is coming out publicly, publicly to talk about this issue of one man, one vote, one shilling. Just days after, the, the, after Martha Karua, together with Jeremiah Kioni, organized the Limuru 3 meeting. Why? Now, Moses Kuria leaked something yesterday, and he said that the main agenda of the Limuru 3 is to all talk about the issues that are affecting the people of the mountain, and one of them being this issue of one man, one vote, one shilling. Listen to Moses Kuria. I'm the only common thread between Lemuru 1, Lemuru 2, and Lemuru 3. We're talking about a period of uh, 15 years. It's a legitimate question, and I think uh, the bulk of the people who will be at Lemuru 3 will be justified to talk about one man, one vote, one shilling. Another thing, Jeremiah Kioni. Jeremiah Kinone has leaked something and he has said that he's also talking about Jeremiah Kinone is also talking about this issue of uh, of the of the Limuru 3 meeting conference and he's saying that we have no problem and this, uh, this this thing really have uh, really shocked me I've listened to it and I've listened to it more than once trying to analyze trying to understand what what did he mean by saying this Jeremiah Kinone is saying something that we have got no problem with with the discussing uh, with having an agenda of uh, the presidential candidate, we have got no, we have got no, no problem with that. Tomorrow we have a meeting, a meeting of leaders who are saying have not been invited in Mount Kenya region, and it is we are telling them there is nothing. We are not going to say that there is a presidential candidate in Mount Kenya. See you, see you today. Today to name member about Mescumanai. How can we make, do, be able to push back? But Jeremiah Kion is saying something that we we need to be very much keen on it. That we have got no, we as people of the mountain. Our tomorrow's meeting, we have got no problem with discussing the issue of uh, the pres presidential candidate. It means that this is something that they had discussed before. Or if they have not discussed it, it is something that is in their plan. That coming 2027, they must have their own political party and they must have their own presidential candidate being represented. <laughs> As much as these people, these leaders, 
have organized have organized this meeting and uh, up to now they've confirmed w- 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 there, there's someone there's a guy there, there's a friend of mine who have sent me a text and he has, he has told me i was trying to talk to him and uh, he told me that uh, up to now 30 political parties have registered have, have said that they are going to be in the meet, they are going to attend the meeting so it means that less than six because we know that in uh, in mount kenya region we have got all, all around uh, 30, 30 to 35 political parties so out of the 30, 35 political parties 30 have, have confirmed that they are going to attend the meeting so it's only around five that have not confirmed yet confirmed that they're going to attend i told you that there is someone that is behind the limuru three meeting and uh, Kuria is, is giving us a leakage. He's saying that uh, I know very well that there's someone who is senior and knows how politics work. And he has given instructions to Jeremiah Kioni that if I, Moses Kuria, attend the meeting, you will not finance. I also noticed, of course, some Kenyans are inviting themselves to our event on, on Friday. So <laughs> we should say that the accreditation of delegates is going on. Yeah, and that's why I'm, I'm really supporting them. I believe that it have been better off organized by neutral people, professionals or business people. But if no one is coming forward, I have got no reason whatsoever to begrudge people who are coming forward. <laughs> who is this person that is, is financing the Limuru 3 conference? That is the question. The big question is, who is this political leader that is financing the Limun 3 conference being attended by the Mount Kenya region political leaders led by uh, Kim Kioni together with Mata Karua? Let us listen to the way Kimani Chunga was talking. Kimani Chunga was being interviewed in one of the televisions and he said something. And when he was, he was asked about this issue of one man, one vote, one shilling, he said that... Uh, this issue of one 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 vote one shilling, they don't even this, the person that is talking about it does not know where it came from. So it means that there is a beef, there is already a beef between Moses Kuria and uh, Rigadi Gashagwa. Why? I've realized that okay, this guy is like he wants to support, he's supporting something that uh, we don't need to support, or this guy is after something. So because because we are we are still supporting William Samoy Ruto as the president. As our party leader, our, 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 our party leader, we need to fight this guy. And Jeremy Kioni said yesterday that Kimani, uh, that Rigade Gashagwa is being fought by the people that he does not, he cannot even imagine that are fighting him. And William Ruto is using people that are very much close to him to fight him. Kimani Chungwa is saying that this issue of one man, one vote, one shilling, they are the people that invited him together with the Moses Kuria and others, when they were trying, when they were in, in, in the Tanga Tanga team, there's something that uh, he recognized that they were in Tanga Tanga team. And he said something that uh, he said that uh, if we, we were talking about one man, one vote, and then Moses Kuria came and talked about this issue of one shilling. And the last word that uh, Kimani Chungwa said that before you put your hand somewhere, confirm. Where you, are, where you are putting your hand. Taxes, you don't come from Central Kenya. Do you pay taxes? Religiously. Are you not complaining here the, about taxes? Taxes are on everybody. We can't continue talking about this country like some of us own this country more than others. We are all Kenyans. Let us appreciate and, and recognize each other as Kenyans. And, and that's my last question because one of the things that the deputy president said when he was mentioning the one shilling, one, one man, one shilling, one vote is uh, it's just prudent that people, majority who pay taxes, right, needs to get a little more. So that's one of the things he said. I know you said I should not draw you to the one shilling one, you, but I'll draw you to it. I mean, what's happening with this debate? Because now there's another proposal. Let me, from let me tell you, as good as you've mentioned, who coined that one man, one vote, one shilling? Do you know? And why it was coined? I'm sure you don't. I can tell you. Mm-hmm. Myself, Moses Kuri, and a group of us who were then in Tanga Tanga. When BBI started, that's when we coined the one man, one vote, one shilling. Mm-hmm. In fact, we had started with one man, one vote. Then Moses Kuria came and added plus one shilling. And it became one man, one vote, one shilling. When Uhuru Kenyatta realized that uh, it's something that was gaining currency with our people, then they got it, put it in BBI, but they didn't know what it was. I like to 
base my decisions on facts, data, not emotions, not perceptions. Okay. Today we may perceive that uh, the, your community, for instance, is the most populous. And because you have a lake and fish that you just fish from the lake and you sell, you pay more taxes in, from Igori County than Kiambu because our coffee, our tea, we have cut down most of our coffee and planted houses, mm -hmm. residential houses that uh, we are, are not generating income. At least not in the level of uh, the agricultural... But products. the facts could be different mm -hmm. because the perception could be that. Mm -hmm. Or you see very nice houses in Kiambu County and assume that all these are indigenous Kiambu people who were born and brought up in Kiambu. Mm -hmm. uh, but you forget Ken Mijungu, who has been earning a very good salary at the uh, Standard Group, just bought half an acre in, uh, along uh, Kiambu Road, uh, made some development and uh, improved our GDP in Kiambu County. Then now because I'm from Kiambu County, I just stamp and talk about my community. Not knowing who's in taking over your community. I hear you. There are communities in this country, Ken, mm -hmm. on the basis of their religion, who have four wives legally, seven children per wife, a family of 28. Me and you, probably we have one wife, three children. Two children, if you're <laughs> doing very well, like me, you have four or five or six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before I give you a chance at the comment section so that you can also tell me what you think I have a very big question I have a very, a very disturbing question that I want you to answer me at the comment section as you'll be telling me or watching us from I, also, I would also like you to tell us what you think concerning this Will it be easy for the people of the mountain to form their political party to fight against William Samoy Ruto? Why? Because right now, the people of the mountain have realized that William Ruto does not mean well to them. So will it be easy for them to form a political party, or even if they form a political party right now, will it be very much strong to fight William Samoy Ruto to make sure that he, he does not succeed coming 2027 to grasp, to grasp some some, some votes from the mountain. Because, okay, it will be easy. It can be easy for William Ruto to be defeated in the mountain. Why? Because this thing that he has started causing a lot of separation and divorce, let me call it divorce, causing a lot of divorce among, among the political parties that are coming from the mountain. We find that now Kimani Chungwa does not, does not, is not in good terms with the Rigade Gashagwa. Uh, Moses Kura is not in good terms with the Rigade Gashagwa. And all these people, uh, uh, people like uh, Jeremiah Kioni, people like Mata Karua, are not in good terms. But you can, we find that all these people are coming from the same region. This has been the target of William Samoy Ruto. To cause, to cause chaos amongst the leaders, for them not to be in good terms, so that when he enters there, he finds that there is no togetherness. But my biggest question is, is this plan of William Samoy Ruto the best way to handle the people of the mountain? Or the, has, have the people of the mountain realized what William Ruto is capable or his plan is and that's why they've decided now to come together as a community to talk about things that are affecting them by themselves. I would like also to I would also like to listen to your comment at the comment section without forgetting to thank those who have been giving us your support because without your support, this channel cannot grow at the rate at which it's growing. Thank you very much. May God bless you as Sante Sana. Don't forget to tell me where you're watching us from and don't also forget to subscribe. Until we meet again, I've been your host, Bonfesso Wino. Bye bye.